Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming to the first hands-on training uh, day. We have prepared in this hands-on training three sessions. Okay. Uh, Okay, we have prepared three sessions in this hands-on training. And the first one is called uh, From Signals to Components, a uh, sort practical uh, experience with a software that is a toolbox of MATLAB, of MATLAB that is called EG Lab. Uh, the second one session or the second sec the second session uh, will be presented by Elena and it's about a blink artifact. Uh, associated with uh, event-related potentials uh, while performing a mental task. And finally, the third session presented by Yema uh, is about the TM is induced artifact. Okay. Okay. Let's remember first of all what what we have done in the lectures of this morning. We have talked about the EG signal and the different types. Of, artif of artifacts that can contaminate the EG signal and lead us to run uh, results and conclusions. Moreover, we have seen an overview of the different signal rejection, uh, artifact rejection and reduction methodologies based on signal processing techniques. Okay, the focus of uh, this hands-on training uh, of this of, of this afternoon is applying. Uh, the, uh, the techniques uh, explained in the morning on several artifacted uh, databases. Now, the chosen uh, software for this purpose is EG Lab, uh, which is an interactive toolbox within the MATLAB environment. Okay, first uh, we will begin by exploring. Uh, okay. Uh, by exploring the capabilities of EG Lab and then proceed to present a couple of examples. The first one involving a mixture of audio signals, like the example in the morning, and the second one being more specific, uh, focusing on artifact contaminated EG uh, signals. And the main point I like to emphasize is the gold standard procedure for artifact removal, which is based on blind source separation. Okay. As I just commented, EG Lab is an interactive MATLAB toolbox for processing a, cont a continuous and event-related EG data. And EG Lab provides a, a graphic user interface allowing users to process your EG signals using dependent component analysis, time frequency analysis, as well as uh, standard averaging methods. In this figure, uh, we have summarized some of the features of the EEG lab, highlighting several functions for preparing our signals, such as resampling, uh, filtering, or re referencing. Uh, additionally, it includes a semi automatic artifact removal procedure based on ICA, also the forward inverse source modeling, and the possibility to perform group analysis by processing and computing statistics on data rec recorded from multiple subjects, sections, and conditions of an experimental study. Okay, just in case you don't have EG Lab installed, uh, please allow me to quickly explain uh, the steps for its installation. Uh, first of all, we have uh, to download the EG Lab package you have in, in the drive. Okay, and then unzip it, change the MATLAB path and write the EG Lab in the command window. Okay, let's start with the first example. Sample. Okay, uh, imagine a room where we have different, different distributed microphones that we ca capture the conversation or the audios in, in the room. If we have a, a person speaking, the sound of his voice will propagate to the different microphones, attenuating depending on the distance of each microphone. Okay. If we have different audio sources, is the sample of this morning, uh, they will propagate in the same way to each of the receiving microphones. Uh, in each microphone, we will re record a mixture of audio overlapping in time and frequency. I think we, we can listen one of the mixes. Okay, to get an idea. 
I'm convinced that the only thing you're kissing me on is that I love my dear. Okay, in the drive, in the drive we share uh, with you a file called mixaudio.mat, okay, uh, which are, uh, in this file we have around 25 seconds of six linear mixes of six uh, audio sources, which are a song from The Boss, uh, another song from Leonard Cohen, uh, two speeches of Steve Jobs and Martin Luther King, and another another song of uh, uh, Imagine Dragons, and uh, finally an unknown audio song, so audio source. Okay, the sample frequency is uh, 49 kilohertz, and the question is: Will we will we be able to identify the unknown source? Is it a speech or a song? Okay. Okay. First of all, we can load our math file and you can see a variable. Okay, we can do this in, in MATLAB. We load the, the math file, okay, and we have a, a variable called mixture, okay. No. Vale. Eh, and this variable mixture is has a length of a, a matrix of six rows and one hundred uh, one million and two hundred thousand columns. Okay, let's run e, the EG Lab toolbox. Okay, you can see it in the in this window. Okay. And the first of all is to uh, import our audio matrix. We have to import data using EGLAB functions and plugins um, from ASCII, flow file, or MATLAB array. Okay. And in this window, we have to put the name of our variable, which is called a uh, mixture. The sampling, the data sampling rate is 4,000. Okay, and as it's not uh, EG data, uh, we don't have information about channel location in this case. Okay, so okay button, and we have to put a name here. I don't know audio, audio or audio mixture. Yeah, audio. Okay, and we have this window. Okay. Now uh, we can uh, see the the signals, the time cues, but they are audio signals. They not it not have sense to to see it. Uh, and the first step uh, we will do is to decompose the data using independent component analysis. Okay, using uh, Pues this blind source separation analysis. For example, we can use two different uh, two different approaches. The first one uh, is Infomax, for example, which is based in the minimization of the mutual information. And the second one, there are two algorithms of FICA. The second one is based on in second order statistics of the data. Okay. Uh, please, you can stand, start first with the Sovi algorithm, uh, and if you have time later or after the session, you can also test the Infomax uh, algorithm because the problem is the computation time. Okay, the computations, the computation times of both ICA algorithms are very different. Okay, for example, on my laptop with an Intel Core i7. Processor, the Sovi algorithm takes a, a, around seven seconds, okay, to decompose the signal, uh, while the Infomax algorithm uh, takes about four minutes. Okay, now we put edit uh, tools, 
the compose the, the compose data by ICA, okay, and select the SOBI algorithm. Okay. And now it's attempting. Okay, the, the, the composition is done. We can see in this figure in five steps and it takes ar around seven seconds. Okay. Okay, once our audio mixes are decomposed, we can calculate the source components in the command window using uh, the computed the mixing matrix. Okay, we can also play these source components since they are indeed audio signals. Okay, as an example, we have to put uh, IC, which are the components, are all EEG which are uh, the structure of the EG lab data, money, ICA weights, which are the weights of the decomposition, and all EG uh, data. Okay. You see, and we have a variable called EC, which are the source components. There are six, uh, six, no, six rows, six source components, six uh, audio mixtures, and the samples. Okay, and we uh, we can now listen the different uh, sound components. Uh, you can try to do it by taking sound. I see one. This is the the first sound component and. It's very important to indicate the frequency because the default frequency of this uh, routine is one hertz, and in our case is 48 kilohertz. Okay, if you put it, you can send, see, uh, you can listen uh, in your computer. Please try in two, three minutes and try to identify the unknown source. This is the this is the first one, and you can change here the second, the third, the third okay, component. Do you have the unknown source? No Imagine Dragons. No Steve Jobs. No the sounds. No Leonard Cohen. No Bruce Sprinting. No, you can stop it. You can you can indicate you can indicate here more uh, less seconds. For example, one, two, ten, four. Okay, this one you uh, you listen only ten seconds. For example. Okay, do you have it? Oh, this is Steve Jobs. Perhaps people from Slovenia? No? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to do it because this is in this computer. No sound. No. Aquí. 
Pon altavoces y pon el tres. Sí, el bueno, sí, yo creo que es el tres. ¿Dónde tienes el? Try number three. Try number three. Which is? Who is this? Who is he? You don't know? You don't know? Is Alex Holovar, our coordinator, okay, of the hybrid neuro, neuro project? Is explaining the the project, okay, in an, in an interview, okay. Well, very well. <laughs> Okay, let's move to the second example. Uh, and we are going to use in this mini session. In the drive, we have a math file corresponding to an awake subject with closed eyes. And we have seven, uh, 60 seconds of EG data referenced to average mastoids, okay, acquired using the 1020 international system. We have also acquired two channels of EOG, electrocolographic signals, corresponding to the vertical and horizontal ocular activities. The, sample frequ the sampling frequency is uh, 150 Hz, and we have also uh, the information of the coordinates of the EG electrodes in a channel location file, uh, also in the Google Drive, okay? And you can see in the picture, uh, on your right, uh, an example of five second epochs of, the, of this data. Okay, so the question now is what kind of, artica, of artifacts uh, can you see in these EG signals? Any idea? Sorry? I blinks and muscular i don't think so I, I i don't know but it's another one very power line power line okay and um, it, it's a, in, an idea okay okay in a similar way uh, to what we did before we will start by importing the signals into the eg lab okay we have here the EG lab. Okay, and we have to first of all load the data. Okay, the data is in this fi math file, EG mix. Okay. Oh. Now. Okay. And uh, we can this call a mixture EG mix EG mix okay and now in Loreta I sorry in EG lab we can import the data analogous analogously as the step before in this case EG mix is called the sample frequency is 150 hertz. And we have the, a file with the location of the EEG channels, the 19 EEG channels, or 21, with the, if we count the, the two EOG, okay? Browse, um, the location uh, file is 20, 21 can is called, okay? When I do it, put okay, and name it, I don't know, EG, okay, okay, and we have here the information in EG lab, 20, 21 channels, 
9,000 uh, samples, sampling rate, okay. And now, what we can do, uh, the first thing we can do is take a look at our signals. I, I do it before, I can do it again here. We can plot and ch channel data scroll, okay? And you see the data, vale? in this case, a uh, five second window, okay? But we can change it here in the settings, okay? We can put 10 seconds, for example. Okay, yes, and we can see the data I, I see, uh, uh, show you before, okay? And what we can do also uh, is to examine some frequency features of uh, how they are distributed uh, in the in topographical map, okay? We can uh, go to plot channel spectral and maps, okay? And in this information, this is the all whole, the whole signal, okay? Uh, percent of the data, nothing. And, and here we have, a, I don't know, we can put a very slow frequency to see if there are, a, if there is some ocular contamination, okay? Like one, we can put a, a, is close size a frequency of alpha, when you close eyes, uh, alpha is, uh, frequency is more pre prominent, for example, uh, 10 hertz. And uh, you say me that uh, the, the data was contaminated by power line. I uh, will put uh, 50 hertz, for example. And the, the range we put from 0.5 to uh, the frequency Sampling frequency was 150, the Nyquil frequency said 75. Okay, we put this information and we can see here uh, in the spectra we can observe the prominent peak at 50 hertz. Okay, confirming the high contamination from the power line interference. Uh, similarly, the spectra in the low frequency, in one hertz, uh, indicate, indicates the presence of a possible ocular contamination because it's very an anterior. Okay, and finally, we can also see the posterior localization of the alpha activity, which is characteristic of closed eyes, as I comment. Okay. Okay, to filter this power line contamination, a uh, first approach uh, could be uh, to use a notch filter. Okay, uh, to apply a notch filter with EG Lab, we have to go to Tools, uh, Filter the Data, Basic, Basic uh, Field Filter. Okay. And we have to speci specify uh, a narrow frequency around a narrow, a narrow frequency range around the 50 hertz and apply the filter. Okay, in this case, uh, around 50 hertz, for, for example, I put uh, 49.5 and 50.5 hertz. Okay, and notch filter the data is, is important. Okay, notch filter and okay. This is the design of the, the filter, okay? And we can call this, it's a new da data set with the signals filter, okay? And we can name EG field, for example, okay? And we can now plot our signals. Okay, you can see it here. And pay for, please, 
attention to what happens in the first and also in the last uh, seconds of the signals after filtering. Okay, this phenomenon is called uh, is known as H H effect. Okay, and needs to be considered with uh, when filtering. Okay, the length of the distorted data depends on the filter settings. Okay? Another approach we can use and uh, we can apply is to decompose these signals okay, using a NICA algorithm and see if in addition to the components due to the ocular or, or contamination, uh, one or more components due to power line uh, appears. Okay? In this case, we can quickly de decompose into source components using the SOBI algorithm. Okay? Not this data set, this is the data set of a signals filter by, by the notch filter. We have, do, we, ca uh, we have to change the data set okay? to, re to go to the raw data. Okay? And we go to tools, the decompose data by ICA, the same way as select the SOBI algorithm and OK. OK, you can assess the differences later no, between the SOBI algorithm and, and the other algorithms no, and compare between them. OK, another important consideration uh, is whether we should include or not EOG channel, channels for the, uh, for the, for the decomposition. No? Uh, in previous st studies in the literature, it has been reported that EOG data aid in the decomposition as they add valuable uh, information about the morphology of ocular uh, activity. Okay. Before or after doing the decomposition, Let's remember, uh, okay. Let's remember the procedure we discussed uh, this morning for filtering artifacts with, uh, through blind source separation. We acquire EEG and EOG signals, which are a mixture of different brain, ocular, muscular activities. Okay, and we don't have any knowledge of the source signals nor the mixing process. Okay, and we can make some assumptions to try to estimate a, a solution. No? Uh, for example, the mixing process is stationary, uh, the sources are independent. Therefore, we can decompose the, the recorded signals into source components. Okay? The next step is to identify which of these components are associated with artifacts and whether or these artifacts are physiolog physiological or, or non-physiological, it's the same, okay? And once we have identified these uh, components associated with artifacts, uh, we can reconstruct the new filter EG signals from the remaining components not related with artifacts, okay? This is a, that we do this morning, okay? And therefore, as the same, no? we can plot now the components, no? the time cues of the of the, compion, the components. Here we put plot and component and activations and see here, no? the first component uh, appears the 50 hertz. No? And I don't know if the, the second are very slow, second, the third, perhaps components are very slow, so they can be uh, related to ocular activity, I don't know, okay? And therefore, uh, once the signal is decomposed by using the SOBI algorithm, uh, we can observe the time cures, I, uh, as I showed you, and also examine some properties of these components, okay? At the spectral or at the topographical uh, levels, okay? Uh, in this case, we can observe uh, the spectrum and the spatial topography of, of the first three components, okay? Let's do it 
we can go to plot and component properties okay and now the component 0.575 for example and now is this is the i i will plot here the the graphics for the first component okay this is the first component i i could select uh, okay and if we see the first component uh, as i suspected uh, there has a lot of uh, uh, 50 hertz okay the spectrum has a prominent peak in at this frequency okay and uh, uh, we can appreciate also uh, that the this interference doesn't affect all the channels uh, all the eg electrodes in the same way okay and on the other hand in the in this picture we can see also the the components two and three okay that they have a lower frequency content and their scalp projections are quite anterior okay so we can consider that both could be related to ocular activity okay in any case the eg lab toolbox incorporates an, an automatic classifier for independent components which provides an estimation or a probability okay of the origin or type or e of each independent component so e i don't know is it's brain eye muscle line noise channel noise other the ic label project aims to develop a really reliable and accurate eg ic classifier su suitable for large scale studies and the current classifier implementation is trained on thousand of manually label uh, ic and hundreds of thousands uh, of unlabeled independent components okay and when this free uh, this first uh, components are labeled as artifacts we can do it before okay we can put tools i uh, tools and classify components using easy label okay and label components okay and you we, we can see like uh, here uh, different classification algorithms okay you have the literature in this paper and when you do it okay zero points okay you can see this information of this graphic okay and below is topographic map not here because okay below is the the probability of each kind of artifact in this case the the most probability is line noise as we suspected and in in, in component two and three are uh, I, uh, ocular activity related to ocular activity and uh, uh, sources no four five are other or brain okay and now uh, once these three uh, components are labeled as artifacts we can reconstruct the eog also and the eg data from the remaining components okay uh, and the, in this figure we i i can do it now okay we choose tools again uh, remove components from data okay and in this case it's easier no to remove three components okay two one two and three and we can okay these components we remove it from data one uh, related to power line and uh, two and three related to ocular activity we say okay uh, accept for example and this is another data set okay as we have uh, before for the notch filter okay in this case eg for example we can put it a, na a name eg sobi okay eg sobi filter and we now we can plot 
our data. Okay, and we can see that it's free from the power line and also from the EEG, uh, the EOG uh, artifacts. Okay, I don't know. So this is the mini session. Okay, thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions. Uh, final okay okay utilizas tu computador utilizas tu they are different but in the same content Joan <laughs> Sí, ya, ya.
M M M M Vale. Ay, aquí está escribiendo. Um, okay. Um, also, uh, a part of Bampas filter, we apply a notch filter to um, eliminate the network interface. And then in the second part of the code, um, we um, plot the spectrum of the raw signal and the um, filtered signal to ensure that the filtration is correctly.
Some of the blood. Yeah. Um, because you should have to but no, some. Um, okay. Um, and here we can see the raw signal spectrum and the filtered um, signal. Um, then when we have the filtered signal, um, we need to examine, um, examine this signal. And um, here there are a variable that is the num channel. And this variable represents um, how many channels we want to plot in the um, in this function that eg, eg plot and we can see that there are um if we have to um, move to right we can see the difference um, event at the stimulus two and the response is stimulus three and um, we can see that there are some channels that are affected by um and we can consider bad channels and um, here in the in the script we put for example FT9 that have a uh, high amplitudes, um, um, T7, um, TZ that have um, low activity, or O1 that have also low activity. As we can be see, there are channels that can be considered bad, but not throughout the inter signal. And these comparisons may also occur in some case. It is important that note that the preprocessing, when we remove is um, there are a step in the preprocessing that is reject but triangle so if one channel have only um, one artifact we can remove this part only and not remove all the channel um as we explained in the morning there are some um, features to detect which are those bad channels and here with this function we calculate the um, kurtosis the amplitude and the variance of um, all the channels to see which channels can we remove. That is this part of the code. In the workspace, we can see these three variables that are an array of um, values of eight channels. We remove the EOG because they have um, different um, features that are not same as the brain signal. And here now you have to put the dress hall. I, we, now we generate the threshold of kurtosis, amplitude, and variance to remove the bad channels. But first, we need to calculate the mean and the standard deviation because the threshold is the mean plus or subtract three times the standard deviation. As we say in the morning, we have to consider that there are some outliers, so we not, not um, have to consider these outliers in the mean. So we remove the 10% lower and the 10% higher of the values to avoid a uh, bias in the mean and the standard deviation. Um, you can complete this part. I am. Um...
Let's see if I can. Okay. I'll open it on my camera. Um, you can use more than one line. Um, the objective is remove the um, ten percent, so speed more or less, lower value, and higher. We don't have any price if you do it in one line. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, <laughs> um, our way to do this, um, here is the solution, we share the values and then make the mean and the standard deviation, um, but remove these six first values and the six um, last values when in the short vector. Um, and then we plot the um, uh, plot with the kurtosis, for example, and the name of the channels to see um, which are not considered good channels. Here, for example, we can see in the two lines that are the thresholds that we determine. And um, here we put the mean plus three times the standard deviation, but we can um, we can be more restricted or less, depend of our interest. And we can do the same uh, in amplitude and with the variance. Here, the amplitude and um, at least the variance. And then we um, show here which channels are not complete the dress code. First, um, about, um, related to the kurtosis, then the amplitude, and at least the variance here. And um, we make an union of these three um, selected bad channels because some of them are duplicate and obtain this list of bad channels here. Um, now we plot, uh, to see an example of bad channel, we plot um, FT9, that is considered here a bad channel, and FT9, I, FT8, that is the same channel, but in the other side of the um, brain. Um, and we expected that FT9 have um, is a bad channel, so we expect high amplitudes or um, not typical EG, and FTA is a um, normal EG, so we have um, here, we check that FT9 is a bad channel. Um, then we um, make the interpolation these bad channels. Um, we replace the data for bad channels by interpolating for the good channels that are near of them. Um, however, we have to determine which distance um, are the near electrodes here. Um, we make um, a topographic plot here, which is the, the channels, and here a list of the bad channels. And with the function, here we determine the distance that we consider um, near channels. Um, 0 0.2, but we can change, and if we not close the window of, of the figure, we can run this section, and it's apply a, a circle with 0 0.2 uh, to see which channels are considered to interpolate, for example, um, O2, this channel. We consider these four um, near channels. If we change the offset and we can plot other um, 
other circles in the figure. For example, if we put um, 0, 1, 0, um, we plot 1 in the PZ, and we see that in this case, the interpolation is considering more channels that O2 that is in the occipital. And in this case, we can make n circles to see about um, how many channels we um, use for, for this interpolation. And we can change the distance and make bigger or, or less. But we consider that 0 0.2 is um, enough. Um, then we can make the, we can run the interpolation and repeat the plot about FT9 and FT8, but in this case, the FT9 is um, interpolated by the nearest channels. And here we can see that in this case, the FT9 have um, similar amplitudes and shapes that FT8, that is, we expected this. Um, then we can generate the trials. Um, in this case, the event data have different events when appears the figure, when the subject um, make an error or um, responds correctly. So we make, um, we find the index T6R1, that is the when the subject answer to the to the test, and then generate the um, stimulus, the matrix of stimulus, that is matrix with three dimensions, channels, samples, and the number of trials, car R44, and then generate um, the um, the averaging of all the trials. We save um, the signal before applying independence components analysis um, because in this case we can um, <coughs> plot the trials averaging without independence component analysis to see that in this case the, the response is associated to the blink artifact here. I Here we plot um, 10 trials randomly with the EOG and with the FPZ, that is a frontocentral channel. And we can see that the, the trial is affected by the blink. So if not apply ICA, we only see this um, blink artifact and it's associated to the response. And in the next plot, we can see that it's not only affect in FPZ, it's affect um, FZ and C2 also, but with less um, amplitude. So in this case, the independence component analysis is necessary to remove this um, blink artifact. And as we explained so here, there are a lot of types of um, um, methods to apply this independent component analysis. And in this case, we use um, SOVI. And here is a component related to the ACE with a 96% um, of probability of a link. And we um, made a count with EOG because we recorded the the movement of the age and without EOG to see the difference when we have um, applied with EOG the independence component analysis or without this signal.
this process is automatically, but we can um, use EEG Lab as before and open and make all um, manually. And this case, the method of the independent component analysis is SOBI because it's the faster ones. No, I don't, porque ya ha fet el primer. <coughs> si no, continuo explicando ya cuando es que um, Then, when we finish to um, load the, um, the independent component analysis, then we um, plot again the ERPs after ICA. And um, here we clear all the variables and open again the signal with 66 channels, that is the um, with EOG and 64 channels. And we compare with and um, before applying this decomposition. And we make um, another time the um, find the events, the samples of the events, and then make the epoch of one of the matrix of the epochs with the 66 channels and 64 channels. And then we plot again the, um, in this case, the FPZ and the FZ that are the channels more affected by the um, blink A's.
No, creo que no se vuelve a cargar. Que no se vuelve a cargar. Sí, porque no se debió guardar en cambio. ¿Puedo tener el papi sin él? Creo que no, no, no. Ah, pero ¿qué es eso? ¿Qué es eso? ¿Qué es eso? No sé. No, no sé. Pero no sé si se está cargando, ¿no? Ok. De 64, ¿eh? Pero puede ser aparato, ya no está corriendo, ¿eh? ¿No? Què? Ja, per això. Ja, se m'hi ha ido. No ho sé. Ja. Ja, s'ha donat això. No et torna a donar tot això. Tot, també amb el llum. Si no, faig el dos. Ja està. Then we run the last section. In this case, in my case, it's not save the signal with 64 channels, so the signal is the same. But... We can see that in the ERP, they remove the the artifact of the blink ace, and we can appreciate the um, the event-related potential. Yeah. Oh, no. No. Um, here we can see that. Um, in orange is the filtered signal and in blue the um, average of the ICA um, with 66 channels and they remove this um, this artifact about the the blink ace and at least the FZ we can see the same that this um, in yellow is only filtering and the others as after applying this um, independent component analysis. And it's all. The next step is um, remove the bad trials and it in, with the same procedure as amplitude kurtosis of the trials. And it's done. And now my... <laughs>
I could say, um, make the presentation about TMS and notified rejection also. Hi, good afternoon. Um, can you hear me well? Yes. Okay. Um, so, good afternoon. I'm Gemma, and in this part of the session, we will be pre-processing TMS EEG signals. But before I start, if you want to follow well the hands-on training, uh, please run the second section of the live script, which is the first one that you have uncommented because the data is quite to upload it. Oh, yeah. okay. So, um, does any one of you know what a TMS EG signal is? Okay. Um, well, it is, it is the result of recording the brain activity simultaneously to the triggering of a TMS pulse. Uh, TMS stands for transcranial magnetic stimulation and it is a type, a type of non-invasive brain stimulation. What we do is to, with a magnetic coil, we trigger a magnetic pulse that will create a magnetic field. 
this field in turn will create will induce a current in the brain so the pyramidal neurons that are below the coil will fire their action potentials and with it with this type of signals uh, we can have a deeper comprehension of brain oscillations connectivity and plasticity and also it provides a deeper uh, direct sorry a di more direct assessment of cortical excitability and inhibition um, however and this signal has a major drawback that is that it is highly artifactuated it has some artifacts um, Apart from the ones that we can see as uh, the blink artifacts that we have just seen with Elena Hanson training, um, the eye horizontal movements, muscle artifacts, and the power line noise, we also have TMS related artifacts that appear because of this pulse. First, we have the pulse itself. It has uh, great values of amplitude, way higher than the ones that we usually see in a common EEG. We also have the TMS decay or ranging artifact, which is kind of this uh, residual of the TMS pulse. And uh, another specific one that in some studies uh, it is, well, in fact, it is a brain signal, which is the auditory evoc potential. When we trigger the TMS pulse, uh, the machine makes a click sound so this click is processed by the brain of the subject and we obtain the event related potential related to this click sound but this is not the brain signal that we want to examine or to analyze so we need uh, to get rid of it as well so and this pre it will be performed with field trip which is a toolbox that you can add to matlab and I have divided the preprocessing in four different steps. The first one is to epoch in the signal or create the trials. Then we will eliminate the samples where the TMS pulse appears, uh, since those samples are irretrievable. And the third step is to remove the rest of the artifacts. And we, again, will apply the independent component analysis. But in this case, um, Instead of doing it with EasyLab, we will use Field Trip. And finally, well, we then we need to select which components we want to eliminate. And finally, we will reconstruct our data with the good independent components and filter it. So the first part, which is the epochony of the signal, uh, you have here commented because the raw data is even heavier than the one that you just uh, loaded. Um, and it is done with the um, function of field trip defined trial. We need to put the name of the event, which in our case is, is 15. And we need also to indicate how many seconds we want to take. Or So usually we put the trial at the center, I, sorry, the TMS pulse at the center of the trial, and we get one second after and before this TMS pulse. There are different paradigms we can have just one pulse, which is the single pulse paradigm, or two pulses per trial, which is the per pulse paradigm. Here in this draw signal, we have single and per pulses randomly. So here, when we define the trial, we also as well um, separate it between single pulses and per pulses. But today, you just will be pre-processing single pulses trials. So um, once we have our trial definition, we can move on to the next step, which is uh, to get rid of the TMS samples. So if we as well run this section. Well, okay. We can see, um, well, it's okay, okay. not interesting, I understand. All right. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we here, here have a raw single pulse trial, and okay, okay. Uh, as you can see, the TMS pulse, which appears here at the center, it has great amplitude values, and this is why we need to eliminate all the samples. They are irretrievable. We cannot get information from them. And field trip works with the structures. 
So all our data will be a structure with different fields inside them. For instance, we have the label, which is the name of the channels, the time, the trials, the sampling frequency, and so on. So to get rid of these TMS polls, we use as well a file trip function, which is reject artifact. And this is the only part that is this different between single pulse uh, trials and per pulse trials. Uh, we need to put the um, data and also to introduce the first and last time sample to exclude. And this gap, it is the difference between single pulse because with a per pulse, we will have a, a greater gap than with a single pulse. We also re-reference our data and then we need to redefine the trials again because the reject artifact function, what it does is to split up the trial into two parts and then we need to reconstruct it again and interpolate the, the gap. And we also downsample the data because, well, to reduce the computational time. So we run this section and what? Well, Meanwhile, this is working. I ask a question. Do you believe that um, just by removing the samples of the TMS polls, we can we have get rid of it completely, or we might have some residual of the polls? Come on. Not people from my group. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Sorry, it takes quite time. Okay. So let's see if we have to receive ones or not by running this section. Okay. Do you believe we have? Remove all the TMS polls or not? I will make it bigger in case you don't see properly. Sorry. What do you believe? Anybody? Well, I don't know if some people in the online. Oh, okay. Well, we do have some residuals. As you can see here at time zero, we have this negative peak that has, well, not uh, as huge values of amplitude as before, but um, more than a normal EEG. So uh, now that we apply the independent component analysis, when we have to well, when we eliminate those independent components that hold artifactual information, we will need to look as well for this TMS residual artifact. Um, as I've said, we are going to implement the independent component analysis with a field trip function, which is component analysis. And in order, so I will run the section and I will continue explaining. Okay. So in order to eliminate the independent components, we have a prepared a uh, figure with four different representations of the independent components. Um, some are similar to the ones that you have seen previously with EEG lab. Here we have the average temporal signal. Then we have the topoplot or the topography where we can see the activity and which electrodes have more activity than the others. Then we have an activity map. In the x-axis, we have the time, and in the y-axis, the trials. And the colors indicate activity. So for instance, if we uh, look at this component 38, and in this activity map, just uh, before the TMS pulse, we see a red line, which corresponds to this positive peak here, and a blue line which corresponds to this negative peak uh, here. And we can see that in all trials, we have these deflections at the same time. So it is a hint that 
perhaps this component it is related uh, to the stimulus because it happens always at the same time, which is after the stimulus. Remember that here in time zero, we have the TMS pulse. And the last representation is the time frequency map. We have an X and the X axis again is a time, and then we have the frequencies in the Y axis. And for the colors, uh, it represents the power of the frequencies. So red colors means more power and blue colors um, more negative power. So what we do is to um, analyze all these representations for the independent components and select if we, need, if we want to um, eliminate it or not. So in this section on live script, apart from the independent components analysis, we also compute the power spectra with the uh, frequency analysis function of field trip. And ideally, it will be half all the time in the world, but with um, we will uh, look for all the 62 components because we have 62 channels, but it will take all the time for the hands-on training. So we, um, I, I have prepared a quiz for you. So and get your laptops or mobile phones, whatever you want, and go to uh, menti.com or scan this QR code that I will present. Okay. Um, no, sorry. You have to pay more attention. Um, I will give you some hints. Um, look at, re remember that the TMS policy that's easy at time zero. So perhaps um, if we see something strange or weird later the pulse it might be related and we want to get rid of it remember um the for instance in, for the eog the frontal electrodes have more activity than the others see different things okay are you in more or less okay oh sorry well you have as well here the QR or and the code is still here in the screen. So uh, this quiz is to test uh, to see whether or not you have been more or less paying attention this morning and in the previous hands-on training. And if you are a pro cleaning signals or do you need more practice? Um, okay. Um, I will present you different component, independent components and you need to classify the information they hold whether they are holding brain information. So we want to keep this independent component. If it is TMS related artifact, EOG, remember the auditory um, art, uh, work potential. Uh, here it is considered an artifact, so we need to get rid of it as well. And if, well, I was going to give you a hint, but remember that appears before the TMS post triggering. Then we also have the muscular artifact and some noise related artifact that could be the power line noise or if one electro has a um, bad connection or anything. So this is the first call. Okay. And okay. You can end it. Vale. Well. Is everybody in, more or less? We want, okay. okay. I will start. And um, you need to select which type of uh, independent component it is. Just another hint, <laughs> the brain information usually has more power at low frequencies and in high frequencies we do not have a lot of power, for instance. What? Ah, yeah. Okay, it is noise related. Good. Uh, it was probably uh, with an electrode. 
let's move on to the next independent component. Okay. Oh, good. Well, this was clear. We we have the peak just at time zero. We have the peak just at time zero, and all the power, uh, the frequencies have all the power as good at the time zero. So very good. You have okay. Next one. There are 10 in total. Are you ready? Okay. Two seconds left. Oh, it was braining for the, in the muscular artifact. We also ha, uh, usually have uh, more power at high frequencies, and not in this case. There are Okay, this is an EOG, it is a horizontal movement of the eyes, and we, we see that the frontal electrodes have more activity than the other ones, and we have also a peak just after the TMS pulse triggering. We are now halfway through. Sí, pero bueno, como ustedes saben, se va a hacer que it was muscular artifact. Uh, we will we have more power at uh, high frequencies. Um Next component.
de, del tercer ojo. Ok. Well, the majority of you have uh, chosen the right one. It was an auditory about potential. Um, in the top of plot, we have concentric um, activity and also um, before 200 milliseconds or so of children of the TMS pulse, we have a um, peak. And in the activity map, we have as well this, well, in all trials, we see that we have this deflection. Okay, okay. No, it's all the way to Come on, this is is this an easy one as well. The time frequency maps gives you a hint. The average signal as well. It was uh, the power line noise because in during all the trial we have um, more po well all the power concentrated at 50 hertz and also we have this sinusoid in the average uh, signal. Ah, uh, okay, next one. Wait. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, well, it was the, the OG, not the auditory. I know it can be so, sometimes tricky to differentiate between both of them, but the topography is different. And also the peak that appears in the blink artifact appears uh, at 100 milliseconds before the TMS pulse triggering and the auditory artifact a few minutes. Yeah, but it is possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. It was positive.
Okay, one to the last. Okay, it was brain information, not muscular. Once again, we have uh, more power at low frequencies, not at high. And the final independent component. Oh, it was team years related. Some of you missed this one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so let's see who is the winner. Oh, well, Sara. Ah, no. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this this super fun quiz is what you have to do for the 62 independent components that you get from the independent component analysis. Um, here in the live script, I have provided you some of the characteristics uh, of each representation to look for. And now, we will move to the um, final part of the pre-processing, which is to reconstruct the signals with the good independent components and filter it. Um, I have done this work for you, <laughs> the one that uh, selecting the independent components, so you just have to run this section. And we will use, once again, a filter function, which in this case, it is reject component. And when it's introduced, the output that we get after the, uh, after the um, analysis and the components that we want to uh, remove. And then we will uh, ban facilitate our data. Uh, once again, with the pre-processing function of filter, the same that Elena has used before. And it's a bandpass filter between 0 0.5 and 70 Hz. And with that, we will obtain our signal clean, and we can uh, move on to the analysis. Uh, usually, well, one of these um, parameters to look for in a TMS EG signals, it is the TMS evoked potentials, or TEPs, which are the oscillations that appear uh, after the TMS pulse triggering. And to do so, uh, here in the variable called matrix AUX, what I have done is to put all the trials in the same variable. So you have the first dimension is channels, the second one is samples, and the third one is the trials. 
And we need to perform the baseline correction, trial by trial, subtracting for each trial um, the mean of the trial in the time being window from minus uh, 800 milliseconds to 10 milliseconds prior to the TMS pulse onset. Um, so you can perform that. And then when you have this matrix AUX BC created, you uh, have to average across all trials and you will have the TMS evoke potentials. You can do it right now if you want. ¿Por qué no? Ah, bueno, es que si no lo habéis cambiado el par. We can also do it together if you prefer. Okay. So, um, we here define the matrix uh, AUX BC. And then we need to do a four for each trial. So it will be for T, which is trial to one, two, size. We sorry. Third dimension and And then we subtract the mean value. And we want all the channels in the time window that goes from minus 800 milliseconds, but um so it will be 0 0.2 multiplicated by the sampling frequency to because the one it will be one second and it is the middle of our trial so it is our zero that's why we put uh, 200 milliseconds and 99 and for the trial and we want it in the second dimension, omitting the nonce. Um, with that, we have the baseline correction, and then we average across trials. In the third dimension, that is where we have the trials. And then, um, uh, in the state of the art, it says that the TMS evoke potentials are clearly seen if we um, look for it in the electrodes where the TMS code was stimulated and in our case was F3 and F5 electrodes, which are uh, the number 5 and the number 34. 
and then we can average the signal of those two electrodes to get the 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 TMS work potentials. So we we do again again I mean. I put always some in none in case we have an unvalue, but ideally we won't have any. And then we can um, plot our data. I will create as well an array of time. And uh, usually the um, time window of interest is right before the TMS pulse up to three or two, 200 or 300 milliseconds. So I will put this time window. Um, sorry, I don't know. Error, un momento. Salida. Sí. Ah, no. Thank you, Leno. So the time here in file trip is in seconds, so we need to multiply by uh, 1,000 to put it in milliseconds. Okay, so here we have the TMS evoke potentials. Um, we have here um, the P30, if I can put the data tip. Well, this is P30, then this is N45, P60, which here is a little bit later in P70 or so and then uh, 100. And those are the typical oscillations that we obtain after stimulating the brain via a transcranial magnetic pulse. And with that, um, you will be able to compute some parameters and to analyze the signal. And you have obtained a clean signal of uh, TMS EEG's paradigm. So, well, if you want as well, we don't have more time, but as a homework, you could also, see, bueno, <laughs> if you are interested in, you can um, look for the topography. So uh, what you could do is uh, by analyzing this signal, indicate the time windows that do you think that 
um, suits better for each uh, team as a bug potential and which will be here or you can also use for instance find peaks uh, of matlab to find those peaks and create a time window ar around the peak then compute the mean um, for each channel in this time window and then you have here the um, the figure to obtain the topography so if you want you can check at home or if you are bored one day you can play with it and so this is all for my part and thank you so much i hope you enjoyed